Back here now for the last segment on today's show to talk about some of the more recent breaking news across the NFL. Not so much on the field talking about quarterbacks and contract negotiations and who is the favorite in the NFC like we finished talking about with the Eagles, but off the field with some exciting news. If you are a Carolina Panthers fan out there, um, I don't know too many, but uh, there has to be some, hopefully some listening to this show. The Charlotte City Council voted on Monday on Monday night to approve a joint $800 million stadium renovation plan with the Carolina Panthers to stay in Charlotte until at least 2045. The final vote came out a, to a 7-3 vote in favor of approving this new renovation plan for the Charlotte, um, not the Charlotte, the Carolina Panthers. $800 million going into this renovation plan. It's exciting. It definitely is exciting for the Carolina Panthers because obviously the production on the field hasn't been the greatest, but off the field, when you can get something like this, it's always exciting when um, the city is buying into, I think, the team. Most of all, when the city is excited about their team, maybe not performing great, obviously, like I just mentioned, but when they have an exciting new plan like this, the stadium's going to look different. It's going to look more... um, modern, more exciting, more improvements to this team. That's something that at least gets the fans in there and gives you more incentive to get better if you're the Carolina Panthers um, as well as that. But for the renovations to Amer- to the Bank of America Stadium, the city will pay $650 million towards the renovations and Panthers owner David Tepper will pay $150 million also towards this plan. The city's $650 million will be funded by the existing hospitality and tourism tax resources that um, that are required by the state to use on projects to support to support the city's tourism economy so they have that going for them Uh, David Tepper not paying too much out of this and I mentioned that only because um, David Tepper according to Forbes is the second wealthiest owner in the NFL estimated worth of 20.6 billion dollars And some of the issues and some of the doubts that came from this plan initially before they voted on it from the residents of Charlotte was that if David Tepper is so, um, I guess, wealthy, worth so much, most people, residents in uh, Charlotte, made the argument that he should be paying for this entire thing and not be asking for the city council and the city of Charlotte to contribute $650 million to this plan if he's worth so much. But... The connection there with David Tepper as the owner um, buying the team in 2018 and the city of Charlotte hasn't been the greatest up until this point. So that was one issue that came about this and where uh, and how I should say, excuse me, how this sort of renovation plan splits up with who is paying what and how much David Tepper is contributing to this project. But according to the Associated Press, Tepper agreed to also pay an additional four hundred and twenty one million dollars as well in potential overages for the for the capital upgrades to the stadium as well so he is paying a little bit more than um than what initially is thought of of um 150 plus the 421 in uh potential overages for the capital upgrades is exciting for the carolina panthers and just outside of the financial talk about this the issues i wanted to talk about with um with this issue, Eric says, with the success of C.J. Stroud, how much pressure is on Bryce Young in his second year? That is, there is a lot of pressure, but I think it should be um, monitored a little bit, if if that makes sense, Eric. Um, because with C.J., he fit into the right situation. Everything fell as perfectly as you would want it to in your first year. You have the talent in Tank Dell. Nico Collins had a breakout year. Uh, head coach D'Amico Ryan doesn't get enough success. He was a absolute rock star for them as a head coach. And defensively, I had they had a lot of young studs on that defensive side of the ball. So everything fell perfectly for CJ, whereas Bryce Young... Um, <laughs> that was funny, Kelsey. Sorry. Um, but for Bryce Young, I think it's just a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit different just because he's had to earn it a little bit more. And with this team, like I mentioned, I think it is so important when... Um, the team just does so much what, so much better to prepare themselves for a rookie quarterback. The Houston Texans did an ideal job of doing that 
by having Nico Collins there already, drafting Tank Dell, having a great defense, and an offensive line that was underrated. They signed Dalton Schultz as well. So they did the exactly what you have to do when you have these uh, rookie quarterbacks coming in. Whereas the Carolina Panthers, I just keep saying it, they didn't do any of that. They didn't do enough to help out Bryce Young. And now with this new stadium coming in and them getting a little bit better, you hope that now they're turning the page a little bit because um, that excitement from a new stadium can only last so long before the team still, or the fans still realize that um, this team is not that great. But they are getting better. They are getting better. And I think this stadium and the potential of them getting a little bit better should be um, very exciting for them. And the issues that just arise a little bit from this renovation plan were that the um, the initial doubts I mentioned around David Tepper paying a little bit more than he should have because of the fact that he is worth so much was one of the issues around this whole you know, situation with the renovation plan, but also one council member, Tijuana Brown, voted no against the renovation plan because of David Tepper's bad reputation and lack of transparency um, with him overall. She mentioned or referenced back to an incident that David Tepper had um, last year when he threw a drink at a fan at an away game last season, and that on top of him asking for $650 million, according to Tijuana Brown, she said that the behavior of someone asking for $650 million is ridiculous based on, you know, his actions. His character comes into question a lot, and that's why he doesn't have such a great relationship with Charlotte and just Carolina in general with this team because of those actions and just people not being too big of fans of him and asking for $650 million doesn't sit too well when most people don't really like the owner, but it was approved. Um, basically, it just came down to the fact that Charlotte didn't want to run the risk of not having the Carolina Panthers in um, Carolina anymore. So that was a big turning point in having more council members vote in favor of this than against it. Also, since David Tepper took over the Carolina Panthers, they've had a record of 31-68. and 68. They've gone through six head coaches and... Um, they were 2-15 and 15 last year, so hopefully they get that turned around potentially in this season. Um, just because, like I mentioned, a new stadium, this team is getting a little bit better. Um, you want that to get better for them. And also, like Eric says, the NFC South, with the departure of Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, and eventually Tom Brady is wide open. Can the Carolina Panthers win at least nine games to get a playoff spot? Nine games is asking for a lot, Eric, I think. I think nine games right right now, if, if you mean right now, no. Nine playoff games right now, I don't think so. Or nine games to get a playoff spot right now, I don't think so. But that is the hope, eventually. With this team getting better, like I mentioned, you got a new stadium coming in. It's certainly exciting. Um, the quarterbacks right now, you have Baker, Kirk, and uh, Derek Carr to compete with. So it's definitely not a Drew Brees, a Tom Brady, and a Matt Ryan to compare them to. So... Um, it is in a weird spot. Nine games right now, I don't think so, but eventually we'll get to that point um, with the Carolina Panthers. I do believe that because they are getting better, I think, with Dave Canales coming in. I'm a pretty big fan of him, so with him coming in, with them getting a little bit better, I think it should definitely improve this situation going forward. And just the last few details on the stadium. The renovations are set to finish in 2029, and the stadium is also... Um, one of the oldest stadiums in the NFL. Um, it's been open since 1996, and no renovations have been made to it since then. So this has been coming for a long time. It comes at a great time where hopefully by 2029, the Panthers are a good team, hopefully. Um, back to Eric's question and just the NFC South as in general. Um, hopefully by that point, they can get to be a 500 team, a very exciting team with Bryce Young, because we are rooting um, for Bryce Young, I think, on this show. We are Bryce Young fans. We hope that he does get better now that the Panthers the Panthers have finally learned that um, you got to do your homework here before you expect any results from a young kid coming in here to just be the face of the franchise. It's certainly not easy by any means. So I'm looking forward to that. I love, I don't know if it's just me, I love seeing like stadium renovations and this sort of thing um, come to the NFL. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars and their stadium renovations. So um, that 
is something that's super exciting to me just looking at the renovations and how cool it looks and the videos that you see drop on social media about it i don't know i think that's super cool and by 2029 it's going to look really really awesome i think in charlotte because it's a great place to have a football team and lastly eric i want to see brian flores get that head coaching job after steve steve wilkes left uh, I think he definitely deserves it. I like him as a defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings, but um, yeah, I think he definitely does deserve it after Steve Wilkes left. Uh, it's going to be interesting, certainly. He's going to get a job, certainly. The, the coaching carousel in the NFL just definitely continues to go over and over. He's going to get a job, certainly, in one of these spots. Probably, if I were to throw out a team that might need one, I wanted to say the Eagles, but um, that would be too crazy if because I just finished talking about them being favorites. But um, he's going to get a job, certainly, um, there, Eric. But that will do it for this show. That'll do it uh, for this segment and the show overall. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me on today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show and also following the network on all forms of social media like Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, and TikTok for more of the network's content. If you want to see more of me and this show, tune into the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel also for more discussions around the NFL. And lastly, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more discussions and conversations around the NFL again with me, Manny Maradiege as your host, thanking you guys for joining me, and I hope to see you guys all back here again tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.